Now, one of the BBC's most successful television comedies, Little Britain, starring David Williams and Matt Lucas, has been removed from all streaming platforms because of concerns about the way that characters from different ethnic backgrounds are portrayed. The show first aired back in 2003. It's now been removed from Netflix and BritBox and BBC iPlayer. Let's talk to our media editor, Amal Rajan. Uh, Amal, let's talk first about the BBC's thinking behind this decision and what, for you, were the questions raised by that? Well, plenty. I mean, I think any conversation about these judgments has to start from the recognition that they are complex, they are sensitive and they involve trade-offs. And in a sense, the issue here is the same whether we're talking about statues or comedy. And that's the distinction, as the historian David Olasoga has talked about, between remembering history as something that belongs in the past and memorialisation, celebrating, revering that past in the here and now. So for the BBC, you talk about the implications... On one side of the ledger, you've got the danger of offending some people, which really matters if you're funded by a universal licence fee or the reputational damage that can flow from that. And then there's also the issue that if we are facing a sort of cultural paradigm shift, the BBC probably wants to be in the vanguard of that, leading that. Against that, on the other side of the ledger, you've got to consider the freedom of some comedians to offend. Secondly, your obligation to the people who made these shows. You've got to remember, as you say, Little Britain was incredibly effective at uniting the nation, had huge audiences, 10 million, won lots of awards, so you've got a duty to them. And then I think a lot, the question a lot of people will ask is, which is the third thing, where will all this end? Do you risk opening up an exercise in kind of offence archaeology where you say to people, dig through the archives and see stuff that you don't like? So it's a complex call, but I'm told that the BBC and Netflix came separately and independently to the view that with the context of all that's going on in the news, the recency of this show and the particular characters in it just took it over the line. But, you know, as you mentioned, this story is, is, is a huge one because it's trending on social media. It's going to be all over the papers tomorrow. It's one of the most read stories on the BBC News website. So it is, I think, a significant moment in the eternal friction between free speech and a plural society. Well, uh, once again, many thanks. Mal Rajan there, our media editor. Now, a leading imam has told the BBC that the government's decision to reopen places of worship for private individual prayer next Monday could cause resentment in some faith communities. The government had listed churches, synagogues and mosques for reopening no earlier than July the 4th. Uh, Kari Asim, who heads the Mosques and Imams National Advisory Board, said that while Christians were able to pray as individuals, Muslims and some other faiths practised communal prayer. And if this wasn't possible because of social distancing measures, it would be better to keep the doors shut. Our religion editor, Martin Bashir, has the story. Before souls can be cleansed, buildings must be sanitised and a team of professional cleaners are preparing Westminster Cathedral for reopening. The largest Catholic church in England and Wales, with a capacity of 1,500, will allow just 60 people a day for private prayer from next Monday. Obviously, I'm very pleased. It's a very important practical step, but it's also a very important symbolic step for our society. Churches with open doors say something quite vivid to our society, which is cruelly lost when the doors are shut. But while Christians have welcomed the government's decision, there's anxiety among Muslims, because mosques are generally used for congregational and not individual prayer. This will increase the tension that's already we're seeing through protests and otherwise, there is a sizable section of the community that feels that the government's announcement has not shown parity between religions. And that's not just the Muslim community, Hindus, Sikhs, Orthodox Jews and other communities are feeling the same. Secretary of State for Communities, Robert Jenrick, accepted that reopening places of worship next Monday will favour some religions over others. Individual or private prayer is more relevant to some religions than others. Other faiths that have more of a tradition of communal prayer, like uh, Islam and Judaism, for example, this is not going to be as meaningful a moment as it is for others. At least 15 of the nation's cathedrals, including St Paul's, will open for individual prayer. But it'll be some time before congregational worship as we know it returns to these sacred spaces. Martin Bashir, BBC News.